Morning. Before we get to what we're gonna talk about today, uh, I wanted to share with you that we launched a funny little quiz of uh, what kind of a designer are you? And you can check it out over here and just go to that link, fill a couple of questions and then you can share the result. I'm apparently the doer and I think that's about right. That kind of matches me. So we briefly went through the theory of being a designer or becoming a designer and we covered all those things like the wireframes, the basics of research, the kinds of research, uh, high fidelity wireframes, final designs, flow diagrams and everything else. And you can find that in a playlist somewhere on the screen here. So the natural next step should be something a little bit more practical. If you're just starting out and if you want to become a product designer or a UI designer, you should watch all those other videos from the playlist first and then let's just do some actual practical exercises. UI design is basically about moving rectangles around. So to put all that theory into practice, this is what we're gonna do today. Normally I'm a sketch user, but because of the availability of it and the fact that it's free, we're gonna use Figma for this exercise. So you can just sign up at figma.com, create a free account. It doesn't matter if you're on Mac or Windows and you can just get started right away. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's start moving some rectangles. Start by creating a completely new document and name it anything you want. All the modern design tools are using a series of artboards or sometimes called frames and they are basically containers for your design and they are the size or the relative size and proportion of the displays of phone displays of uh, computer displays so anything that you'll be designing for. You can create one from scratch by pressing the A key on your keyboard and then just drawing but you can also just press the A key and select one from the list on the right. And there is like a huge list of devices, so for most scenarios you'll be fine. So I'm just creating a typical iPhone size here and you can move the artboard around by just clicking and dragging on its name. Now press the R key to start creating rectangles and then just click and drag. You can then move the rectangle around the artboard and as you can see there are guys that will show you when it's perfectly in the center. You can then zoom in by pressing the Z key and just left clicking with the magnifying glass or you can hold the Alt key and left click to zoom out. The shape itself is defined by the fill, which is basically the background color of it, but you can also add a stroke, which is an outline, a border that goes around it. You can change the thickness of the border by just changing this number here and you can place it either inside, outside or in the center of the shape. So if I change the opacity of the border to be somewhat transparent, you can see what it actually means. And in general, mostly you'll be working with borders on the inside because they do not modify the actual visual size of the object. Let's remove the border for now and just focus on the fill. Obviously you can modify the color and you can also apply a gradient to it, but let's just focus on colors for this first exercise. I'm gonna change it to red and it's not gonna be a very saturated red because very saturated colors can actually hurt your eyes when they're shown on a display. So it's best to avoid those super saturated ones. If we select our rectangle and hold the Alt key, you can see that we see the distance from the rectangle to the edges of the artboard and with UI design, symmetry is actually a good choice, so it's best to have the same space on the left and the right side. So modify your rectangle until it has just enough space or enough margin on every side. And I'm gonna choose a multiply of 8, so we're gonna choose 32 on every side. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger vertically, so it's gonna be a nice card. Okay, now it's time to make a second rectangle, but this time it has to be a little bit lighter. So first of all, it's gonna be visible on the background of the first rectangle. And also in general, all the objects that are higher in the hierarchy should be a little bit lighter. So it kind of shows that they're closer to you. And this new rectangle will be positioned 24 points from every side of the rectangle that contains it. And we're gonna leave a little bit of space at the bottom. Now create two smaller rectangles like buttons and place them 24 points from all of the other ones. So it needs to be 24 inside the main rectangle everywhere. Adjust everything so your grid is complete. Now create a small rectangle, maybe 24 by 24 points and position it in the top right of one of the rectangles at about 16 points from every side. 
As you can see, all those distances are multiplies of 8, and that makes it a lot easier to create a soft grid. You can read more about it in the book. You can now drag and select all those layers and press Command G or Ctrl G on Windows to create a group. Then you can just copy and paste the group to create a duplicate and create a little bit more of a structure for the screen. This exercise is about understanding the basics, because if you know the basics of alignment and proper spacing and actually being very precise in everything you do, and you can learn that by starting with block frames like that, you'll be able to create amazing designs later. So learning the structure on the colorful boxes is going to be very helpful when you try to go to the next level and create an actual design with text and images and graphs and charts and gradients. So one thing you could do is actually take a screenshot of a popular app and try to just recreate the boxes in it. Try to just find the right spacing, the right sizes of everything and just recreate it as rectangles. Because before you get to the real design, you need to be super comfortable with the proper sizing, spacing and alignment. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, share the video and see you next time. Cheers!